everyone, Pam here, and I am celebrating coming to you with a lovely glass of red wine because I have just finished a fantastic photo shoot with Emma from Simply Branded Photography. We did some great shots over here in Virginia, and hence I have my Virginia retro dress on. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to see the shots. And if anybody out there is looking for a fantastic photographer, whether you're an author, any kind of creative or just family shots, anything, I highly recommend Emma. Once the photos are out and ready to go, I'll share them on Insta and on Facebook and social media just so you can see what a great job she does. She rocked up here and I didn't have things ready. It was all chaos and she just pitched in and we got everything sorted. We went for a walk down to the creek, got some fantastic shots down there. We did shots around the house, shots here, shots in my tiny house and with the horse, with the dog, it was just all happening. So thank you to Emma from Simply Branded and highly recommend her services if you are looking for a great photographer. So all that being said, another reason to celebrate is because it's the 1st of December and I'm here to kick off the 12 days of Christmas. And what that is on Rights for Women is 12 days of fantastic book recommendations from the guest hosts and some people from my writing group, The Inkwell. So we did this last year and it was really great to share book recommendations and to pick up some ideas for gift giving. And so I thought this year, because I have some fantastic guest hosts coming on now on Rights for Women, I thought I'd ask them, those of them that wanted to take part and that had the time because it's such a busy time of year to share four books, keeping up the theme of Rights for Women, that they would recommend either for gift giving books they've loved this year or holiday reading. So being the host and all, I thought I'd better kick off and it is the 1st of December, so I need to get cracking. So first of all, I'm breaking my own rule and I'm going to share six books with you instead of four. Three of those are books that I have read this year and love, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about them. And three are books that I'm looking forward to reading over the holidays. So the first person, and you will have heard me probably raving about this at some point or other, because I have absolutely fallen in love with Emily Henry, my absolute favorite of Emily's that I read. And I read all three this year. I devoured them was Book Lovers. It's really great to see the resurgence of rom-com. I loved all those rom-com movies with Julia Roberts and Meg Ryan, all those fabulous 80s and 90s movies. And it's really, and Bridget Jones, of course, and it's really great. And a lot of this has happened via TikTok. If you've listened to some of the podcasts this year with Stacey McEwen talking about the rise of book talk, and it has really led to a resurgence of reading amongst young people, but it's also introduced us to some fabulous writers. And Emily Henry is one of those. This one's People We Made on Vacation. I did love that, but my favorite of hers was Book Lovers. Fantastic, snarky main character, Nora. Fabulous, gorgeous hero slash anti-hero Charlie and she's an agent he's a publisher so it's all around the book industry it's set in a small town great characters great supporting cast everything that I love and of course it's a rom-com so it's like an enemies to lovers type trope in that one and the other one is Beach Read which I also love in fact I love them so much I've listened to them on Audible as well and I'm also listening to them again to help me go to sleep because I don't need to tune into the story so I just listen to have the voices and the story droning on in the background as I attempt to get to sleep, which isn't happening a lot lately. Another book I really loved this year, and I had this on my shelf for a while, but this is Once There Were Wolves by Charlotte McConaughey. And I saw Charlotte speak at Storyfest last year about this book, and it really intrigued me. It's beautifully written. It's set in Scotland, and it's a woman working in the wildlife area, and it's about reintroducing wolves to the Scottish Highlands. But of course, the, the main character who is quite conflicted in, in numerous ways arrives in this town where the locals don't want the wolves brought back in because of course they're going to, they're worried about the threat to their property and to their animals and things like that, to their farms. And so she's in an immediate situation of conflict, beautiful setting, lovely characters, just lovely writing. And there is, Charlotte has another book called Migrations also known as The Last Migration, which is on my shelf. And I'm going to be reading that one over the holidays because I just loved the writing in this book. And of course, this is one I read recently and I've had Holly Ringland on the podcast talking about the seven skins of Esther Wilding. 
I thought it was a beautiful book. There were lots and lots of things happening in it. There were different settings. I love Holly's respect for Indigenous culture and the way she weaves that into her storytelling. I love the weaving in of the fairy tales into her storytelling and her writing and the way she mixes present and past and really brings that past into such immediacy in the way she writes in this particular book, Seven Skins of Esther Wilding. So absolutely gorgeous cover, stunning inside and out, just Holly. If you haven't caught that interview, by the way, really a good one to catch. Excuse me while I sip my wine. Now, books I'm looking forward to reading over the holidays. This one has been in my pile for ages and I've loved Eliza Henry Jones's book. I haven't as yet, because my pile is always so big, gotten around to reading Salt and Skin, but I can't wait to read that. It's got a little bit of a mystical sort of theme in there. Drawing on records of the witch trials and folk tales of the Northern Isles, Salt and Skin is full of tenderness, magic and yearning. It's a meditation on the absence of women's voices and stories in history and the unexpected ways that sites of long ago trauma continue to haunt the living. So that's really one to, I can't wait to read it. I just love Eliza's writing. That's great Australian fiction. Another great Australian author that has resided for a long time in America. And I got this for my birthday, Geraldine Brooks' Horse. That was back in July and I'm yet to read it. So that's definitely holiday reading for me. I don't think I need to explain why I want to read that one. It's Geraldine Brooks, fabulous writer, and the title is Horse. What else is there to say? And the last one I'm really looking forward to reading is Shelter from the Storm by Penelope Janu. Pen is a great friend of mine and a writing buddy in the Inkwell. And I have been very fortunate along the way to read excerpts of this book. We were doing some backwards and forwards feedback giving to each other when she was writing this book. So I've seen little sneak peeks of it and I love the cover of this book. I think the colours are fantastic and Penelope is just going from strength to strength. So I can't wait to read that one. So there are not four, but six book recommendations for you, either for yourself, for your loved ones, or to read over the holidays to give us gifts. Please stay tuned to Rights for Women over the next 12 days. It might be slightly longer, might be slightly shorter. I'll be showing snippets of the videos on social media and it'll be in your podcast feed, the 12 days of Christmas book recommendations from Rights for Women. Cheers. <laughs>